I'm Caitlin Henderson from Waffle TV and joining me on the couch today is Mark Watson. Hi Mark. Hello. Hello Welcome. Caitlin. So um, you were born in Bristol to Welsh parents and you started to perform in a Welsh accent when you first did comedy. Why did you choose to do that? Uh, well, it was just kind of... Um, a defence mechanism really to stop it from being so scary. Yeah. Um, just, it's nice to have a sort of persona to yeah. hide behind. And then as time went on, I found I didn't need that as much. Plus, the other thing was it was um, the Welsh thing was always funny in it. And I did, you know, like you say, I had Welsh parents. It's very, yeah. it's very instinctive to me to talk in yeah. Welsh accent. But my natural voice is not that Welsh, so it was, it was getting odd because I'd do yeah. a gig uh, in People a broad Welsh change. accent. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be driving home with another comedian, and I'd, I couldn't work out whether to be like, oh, should we stop at the yeah. services? Or, and then I would do interviews on the radio, like. And it's, I couldn't talk in my accent because, yeah. you know, it was when I started doing more telly and more radio and stuff and I felt like I'm going to either have to do the worst things for the rest of my life or yeah. I need to drop it now, so I dropped it. Yeah, brilliant. So um, you're a regular at The Fringe, you've done some unusual shows, you've done a 24-hour marathon before. How was it doing that? How do you stay motivated? Um, the motivation is just all about the audience, basically. The, you get a lot of energy from the audience. Um, because the, the, a lot of the audience did stay for the full 24 hours or they came for long periods and then went away again and it became a big event. So it becomes less about you performing to them, more just a massive sort of act of cooperation. And yeah. the sort of people that can be bothered to come to something like that are, they're really into it as well, they yeah. really lift you. So basically it's just all about that. It's yeah. all about the sort of, the energy, you know. Um, and also it's fun to do something crazy that not many that no one's ever done before. These days, a few other people have done 24 hour stuff, like yeah. radio, like Moyles, the radio show and stuff. Yeah. But when I did it, certainly the first time, it was like kind of a, something that hadn't even done before. So the motivation came from just this, the craziness of it, basically. You know? Yeah. So your show this year is called The Information, and it's on internet mishaps and mistakes. Where did you get the inspiration for that? It's just about the internet generally, really, the show, yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, well, I was, I was, this is, Sort of a mishap is quite a gentle word for it. I was um, scammed online, like someone really? hacked into my bank account, oh, wow. and I lost all my money. I did get it back. The bank's insurance covered it, but I had six weeks where I, you know I was having to prove that. I, and but you were Mark Watson. Yeah, so obviously it made me think. Well, I definitely am Mark Watson, but this other guy also claims yeah. he is. So who's who's lying? Yeah, and it made me think about the fact that with the power of the internet, it's quite. Yeah, firstly it made me think. Well, there's a show in that, yeah. and uh, I do think it's a weird thing that we live in a world where anyone can get a lot of information about me just with a Google search. It's not the sort of, it's never been like that before, yeah, you know, exactly. what used to be like a, months of work to steal someone's identity, but now it's yeah. so easy. So the show is sort of about what that means for the, for the world, yeah. basically, because I do think it's a big change from, from how it used to be, really. Yeah, definitely. And um, you've also been on TV quite a lot with your Mark Watson's Kickoff and Mad Bad Ad Show, but you also um, dipped into some advertising, in particular the Magnus yeah. Post side ad That's right, that's my proudest yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, how did that come about? Quite literally, they just asked me to do it. Like I, I didn't, I've never really auditioned for adverts yeah. or, or gone, gone looking for that. And in fact, it seems so unlikely that I thought it was a joke. Because like, yeah. I've never... Did you play it seriously or did you just do it with some comedy? Magnus advert. <laughs> um, the, the idea of it was, was sort of semi-serious. It was just me wandering along the street, you know, talking in much the same. They wanted someone to do like a bit of rambling stand-up. Yeah. And then and then drink some magnets basically. So yeah. I thought, why wouldn't I? I did have a few. I had a few qualms about doing it because I thought, um, you know, it, you know, as a comedian, it's not very cool to tie yourself to a brand. <laughs> but it was cider and it's sort of fine. Yeah, it didn't seem to have any. I looked into the company, but it didn't seem to have any major sort of moral issues. Um, and of course, it was very well paid. A lot of things you do in, in your career. That, well, it kind of is because. When I thought, like, I've done loads of things that I thought were good or that had a lot of integrity and didn't make any money. So in yeah. the end, that's the thing. By doing an advert, it paid for me to spend six months writing a novel, for example, which yeah. I couldn't have otherwise really done. So yeah, I think in in this career, you sometimes do things that are better paid, but yeah. like corporate stuff, in order to buy yourself the sort of the yeah. time to do stuff you more want to do. You've also been in the Innocent Smoothies advert yeah. as the rabbit. How That's did you right. Get into the role of the rabbit. I just, <laughs> I just, I'm so naturally like a rabbit that it was no effort at all. I find actually. it quite yeah. easy. Yeah. In fact, that was the easiest thing I've ever done because I wasn't even on the screen. Obviously, yeah, it was just, just a picture voice. of a real rabbit and a voice. Doing the voice of a rabbit is the, yeah. about as easy as life gets. I mean, it was <laughs> again. I couldn't. I'm always surprised that. I get asked to do these things in a way because I mean, I 
it's not you don't get that much money for doing a voiceover, but, but even so, it's, it really is money for a rope. And I was just sitting there thinking, you know, I did it, I did it fine, but I yeah. did sort of think, they could have just got anyone off the street to yeah. read that. Like, you're not going to see you must me. must have thought you have quite a calming rabbit kind of I voice. suppose so. And I did think my voice fitted the rabbit quite yeah. well. Chris Addison did one as well, I think. And there's been two or three comics that have, that have been the rabbit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, that's probably ideal. Brilliant. If you can do an advert, uh, get paid to do an advert, but without ever even appearing on screen, yeah. that sort of is win-win, Brilliant. really. Yeah. You know, whereas if you're dressed as a giant rabbit, that's probably not as good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you've also written four novels, and yeah. one in particular, Craft About the Environment, where you were trying to cut down your carbon footprint. That wasn't a novel, yeah. actually. That was a non-fiction, but, oh, okay. um, well, you, but there are four novels as well. interested in? Or yeah, a few years ago I did it. Uh, sort of uh, uh, at the height of the kind of um, climate change. Well, it's not at the height. The height is now. The height is when the world melts. But um, <laughs> there was a particular amount of interest in the sort of debate at, at the time about five years ago. So I did a whole project on trying to reduce my carbon footprint yeah. for a year, which I did successfully. Um, and I wrote a book about about that. It was called Crap at the Environment because I had always been. Uh, not really a sceptic, just totally lazy about yeah. bothering to be green. And I still am, actually, but I did try and do small stuff now that I wouldn't have bothered to do before, and the book was kind of about that. That's the only sort of, like, comedian's book that I've written. The novels are all more kind of serious, serious novels. That's, sort of, that's my day job. And so um, you're also in the Edinburgh Olympics with other comedians, you can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, well, it's my kind of, it's my project, and basically just comedians compete over a range of kind of Olympic events. Some of them real ones like running and jumping and then some stupid stuff like water yeah. fights and things. It'd be just a mixture of, so that's just for six nights. I thought it'd be nice to have a sort of Olympic themed yeah, event. Definitely. And um, so it'll be like different comedians from different countries all competing, but really stupid. It'll be really stupid. Yeah. Uh, the actual Olympics will have finished by then, so it'd be a nice opportunity yeah. to just... Um, nice to give Edinburgh their own Olympics, I guess. Mm. Exactly, we're all sort of missing it up here. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a lot of it on TV, but yeah. I was in London at the start, it was brilliant. And, um, wow. I went to a few of the events and stuff. Up here, we're a bit out of the loop, so yeah. I thought I would take it upon myself to supply an Olympics Thanks for everyone. It's fine, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> exactly. I'm, you're anytime part. you need an enormous <laughs> event, I'm your man. Exactly. And so, um, what's the best thing about performing at Edinburgh Fringe? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's got to be something. <laughs> well, basically, it, it's the thing is, it is, it's very hard. It's hard work in a lot of ways. It's because it's so long, the festival, and because yeah. it's, it's hard, it's tough on your self esteem and those sorts of things. But, the, the reason people keep coming back to it, in spite of everything that's hard, is that um, it is an audience of, of comedy lovers. It's the one time in your career, really. Well, there are other festivals, Melbourne festivals, in, in some ways better, but this is still the biggest one in the world. So if you yeah. ultimately, if you want to be a comedian, you have to be able to get up in front of a proper comedy audiences. And anyone that is a comedy fan basically has to be here, yeah. really, for, at some point during that's the month. Smart, yeah. yeah, I think so. Like, you don't get any impression on telly of what real yeah, life comes right. like compared with this so this is still the real deal so even though it's hard when it goes well you do feel amazing and even if it's not going well you'll have some people in your audience every night that are like proper comedy hardcore yeah. so in in terms of doing what you want to do as a comedian the shows in Edinburgh mean a lot more than like a telly show or a panel show and stuff where you reach a much bigger audience with a TV show but ultimately in Edinburgh you can do your own thing you can do whatever the hell you like and it's your show and you've got your audience that's why people love Edinburgh because it's for some people, it's the only time in their career they're really doing what they purely want to do. Yeah, and do you use um, real anecdotes in your sketches or something? Uh, I normally start with real... I, I don't ever really completely make stuff up. Yeah. I would just feel weird doing it. Yeah. But I do start with stuff that's real at events yeah. and then obviously, but like you do with it, and they, you, <laughs> you distort things. In the same way as if you're telling a story in the pub or something, you add to it more and more and exaggerate. It's kind of like that, basically. Yeah. Most of my stories and gags and stuff like are rooted in reality but then they become they become sort of partly jokes partly partly just yeah you add to it more and more yeah. Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you very much for the interview and if you'd like to go see Mike Watson he's on between the 6th and the 27th of August at the Assembly George Square